little fox. The Little Mermaid, Chapter One, The Sea Kingdom. At the bottom of the wide ocean is a world called the Sea Kingdom. This kingdom lies at the deepest part of the ocean. It is deeper than any anchor can go. It is so deep that humans who live on land in the upper world can never visit. In the Sea Kingdom, blue water covers everything. The water there moves like the waves above. When the ocean is calm, the sun's rays reach down to this deep place. And on a still night, the moon and stars send pale light sparkling down through the water. The most beautiful trees grow at the bottom of the sea. Some have purple branches and blue leaves. There are gardens with many brightly colored flowers too. The plants all move slowly back and forth with each ripple of the water. Many kinds of fish, large and small, swim among the leaves and the flowers. They play all day and sleep among the rocks. Sea folk live in the Sea Kingdom, and they are called mermaids and mermen. They love to swim and play tag with the fish. The mermaids also love to feed the fish from their pretty hands. Like their fish friends, the mermaids and mermen have tails to help them swim. The sea folk love the ocean and everything in it. They would never want to live anywhere else, and they live a very long time—about three hundred years. The sea folk are happy to spend their days singing and playing in the gardens. A long time ago, a king lived in a palace at the deepest part of the sea. He lived with his six young daughters, the mermaid princesses. His palace had walls of bright orange coral. Black mussels covered the roof. Their shells opened and closed with the changing of the tide. When each shell was open, a silver pearl twinkled from within. The sea king was kind and ruled over all the beings living underwater. He loved to make them happy, but he lived with a broken heart. How sad that my wife, the queen, died many years ago. He sighed. <sighs> Now I care for the six mermaid princesses all by myself. Oh no, you don't," said his mother, the wise mermaid. I'm the one who takes care of them, and I make sure the palace is clean and tidy too. Son, you always forget about everything I do around here. You are right, mother," said the sea king with a smile. "This family is very lucky to have you." The wise mermaid knew a lot about the world, and she taught her granddaughters well. When you are ready, she always told the princesses, "I will teach you about life above the sea." The sisters were each born one year apart. When each sister turned fifteen, she would be allowed to swim up to the sea surface. Then the mermaid princess would see the upper world for the first time. The mermaid princesses were happy with their simple lives in the sea kingdom. Every one of their days was spent in fun and laughter. But the youngest princess was different. She was quiet, thoughtful, a bit unusual. Because she was the youngest and the smallest, they called her the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, Chapter Two, The Youngest Sea Princess. Each princess had her own small garden. One princess made her flower bed in the shape of a whale. 
another princess made her garden in the shape of a shell. The sisters filled their gardens with odd things they had found in sunken ships. But the Little Mermaid's garden was simple. It had only red flowers and a statue of a human boy. The statue had been her mother's, and the Little Mermaid loved it. While her sisters played in their gardens, the Little Mermaid sat quietly in hers. Looking at the boy, she wondered about humans and the world above. What is it like in the upper world? She asked her grandmother one day. Oh, little one, there is so much to see, said the wise mermaid. There are thick forests of trees that turn colors when the air turns cold. Soon after, their leaves fall to the ground. Then the snow comes. Snow, said the little mermaid. What's that? Snow is made of thousands of small ice flakes, replied her grandmother. In winter, these flakes fall from the sky. But in summer, green grass covers the ground. And the flowers give off a lovely scent. It sounds wonderful, the little mermaid said. Here, our trees always look the same, and the flowers have no smell at all. The wise mermaid told her more. In the upper world, you can look up in the sky and clearly see the sun, moon, and stars. And birds fly from tree to tree singing lovely songs. Tell me about the animals, Grandmother, the little mermaid begged. Some fly, as I said, but many have four legs and walk on the ground. Humans walk on two legs, and they are very good at building things. They make lots of houses, which become towns. The Little Mermaid wanted to hear more. They also build ships, don't they? Oh, yes, little one, her grandmother said. But you already know that. I know, but I love to hear about humans. They come so close to us, sailing above, but their world seems so far away. Yes, humans are very different from us, said her grandmother. They don't live as long as sea folk. We live for 300 years, but humans have souls. What is a soul? The little mermaid asked. I don't know, little one, the wise mermaid replied. I have heard a soul can live forever. But humans don't really know what a soul is either. Whatever it is, I think it must be something special. I want to know everything about humans. When you are 15 years old, you will see, said her grandmother. You'll swim to the surface and watch the ship sail by. But I want to go now, the little mermaid pleaded. Be patient. Your turn will come in five years, said her grandmother, smiling. But you will find, dear, that our home down here is better than any place else. The years passed, and the Little Mermaid's sisters went to the upper world. But she had to wait. So, on clear nights, she looked up at the moon and stars. Whenever a shadow swept across them, she knew it was a ship passing overhead. Eagerly, the Little Mermaid stretched her white arms up toward the bottom of the ship. Someday, she would touch the world above. The Little Mermaid Chapter 3 Tales from the Upper World As each mermaid princess reached her 15th birthday, 
she was allowed to swim to the upper world. Before her journey, each sister promised to tell the others what she saw the next day. When the eldest princess turned 15, she spent her time close to shore. I lay on a sandbar in the moonlight and gazed at a distant town, she told her sisters. The house's lights twinkled like stars. Bells rang from a large house with a tall tower. The next year, the second sister came up to the surface at sunset. The sky and the water glowed golden red, she said. I saw fluffy purple clouds high overhead. A flock of white swans flew just above the water toward the setting sun. The following year, the third sister went deeper into the upper world. I swam up a river and saw rolling hills and woods filled with tall green trees. I heard birds sing happy songs to their chicks. In a small cove, humans were swimming, even without tails. Frightened of the humans, the third sister fled back to the open sea. Hearing this, the fourth sister was less bold. She kept far away from land and stayed among the rough waves. I saw playful dolphins jumping over each other above the water, she said to the others. Huge whales spouted water through holes in their backs. In the distance, I saw ships. They were so far away that they looked like seagulls. Now the fifth sister had her turn. Her birthday was in winter, when the sea often turned a deep green and storms raged. Enormous icebergs stuck out of the water. I sat in the snow on a mountain of ice, and I watched a ship sail by, she told her sisters. Soon, the sea became choppy, and the green waves turned black. Thunder roared in my ears, and I saw lightning flash across the sky. Some evenings, the five older sisters swam to the surface together. They sat on rocks and sang to the ships. They had beautiful voices that rang through the air. But when the sailors heard the sisters' songs, they became frightened. The sailors quickly turned their ships around to head for shore. As the years went by, humans told stories of the singing sisters. They said mermaids were wicked because they tricked humans. Foolish sailors loved to hear the mermaids' songs and would sail too close. Then their ships would crash into the rocks. None of these stories were true. The sisters did not want to hurt anyone. They just loved to sing. But the five mermaids eventually lost interest in the upper world, and they spent less and less time singing to the ships. For the sea folk, there was no place as nice as their home at the bottom of the sea. The sea kingdom was the best place to live, and always would be. For five years, the little mermaid listened to her sister's tales. She longed for her own adventure in the upper world. Oh, how I wish I were 15, she cried. I know I will love the world up there and all the humans in it. The Little Mermaid Chapter 4 The Little Mermaid Surfaces At last, it was the Little Mermaid's 15th birthday. Today will be your first day in the upper world, announced her grandmother. I'm so excited, squealed the Little Mermaid. I've been waiting so long for this day. The wise mermaid placed a wreath of white lilies in the Little Mermaid's hair. Then she hooked four oysters on her tail a sign of royalty. Ouch! That hurts! cried the little mermaid. A small sacrifice for becoming a fifteen-year-old princess, said her grandmother. 
The Little Mermaid had to agree. The oysters looked lovely. But she was anxious to start her adventure. Please hurry, Grandmother, she begged. Go ahead, dear, her grandmother said. But don't stay too long. Remember, your place is here, under the sea. Impatiently, the little mermaid hugged her grandmother goodbye and swam away. When the little mermaid got to the surface, the sun was just setting. She saw the sky turn from blue to pink. As night fell, the sky turned deep purple and sparkled with stars. Soon the moon poured light on the sea. It's so beautiful in the upper world, exclaimed the little mermaid. In the distance, the mermaid saw a ship with three tall masts. She swam closer and saw that the ship was standing still in the water. Music was playing and she saw bright colored lights. Sailors moved about on the ship's top deck. They walked on two legs. Humans? She wondered. What a strange sight. Excited, she swam right up to the side of the ship and peeked through a window. Inside, more humans were singing and dancing. All of them were dressed in fine clothes. It looks like a party, she thought. The mermaid studied each human carefully until her eyes fell upon a young man. Oh, how handsome, she thought. Her eyes followed him as everyone went up on deck. We remember when you were born, dear prince, 16 years ago, said a woman with a blue feather in her hair. He's a prince, exclaimed the little mermaid. Another guest said, With your kind heart, you'll be a great king someday. May every year be as happy as this one, added a man, holding up his glass. Happy birthday, prince! The crowd cheered. Everyone loves him, thought the little mermaid. He must be wonderful. Rockets shot into the air and exploded into a thousand tiny lights. The water reflected the fireworks and the entire ocean glowed. Oh my! The mermaid had never seen such a sight. Frightened, she quickly dived underwater. But looking up through the water, she soon lost her fear. So many sparkling flowers in the sky! She exclaimed. The prince hugged his guests, shook their hands, and said, Thank you for a lovely celebration. The little mermaid swam up to the surface and watched. The prince was the most beautiful of all the humans. He was as beautiful as the statue in her garden. But soon the music stopped and the colored lights were put away. Thanks for all your help, said the prince to his crew. It was a great party. Then the prince and his guests went below the deck to sleep. But the little mermaid could not swim away from the ship or the handsome prince. For her, it was love at first sight. The Little Mermaid Chapter 5 The Storm Suddenly, there was a loud rumble from deep in the clouds. Large raindrops fell from the sky. Waves swelled up from the sea like towering black mountains. Oh, what fun, thought the little mermaid. A storm is coming. In the sea kingdom, she and her sisters were safe from storms. They loved to play in the churning water but the sailors were frightened. They yanked the ropes that controlled the sails. The prince's ship turned to and fro in every direction. Strong winds rocked 
the ship from side to side. The angry sea would not let them sail back to land. All hands on deck! shouted one sailor. The ship is out of control! shouted another. Unafraid, the little mermaid waited in the distance. Through the darkness, she watched the ship and thought, Lucky me! Now the prince can't sail away. Maybe I can get another look at him before morning. The little mermaid didn't understand that the ship was in danger. The storm grew stronger and huge waves crashed on the deck. The wind beat against the sails and tore them to pieces. Then without warning, the main mast snapped and fell into the water. The boat began to tip to one side and seawater flooded the deck. Get out the lifeboats! cried a sailor. We must save the passengers! But it was already too late. A bolt of lightning struck the ship and a strong gust of wind blew out all the lights. Suddenly, everything was pitch black. Then another lightning bolt struck and set the ship on fire. Burning pieces of the ship were scattered everywhere. By the blazing light, the little mermaid could see that the humans were fighting for their lives. Oh no, she cried, the poor humans! Some of them were thrown into the sea. Others jumped from the flaming decks. Help! 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 They screamed as they fell into the water. The little mermaid saw the woman who wore the blue feather holding onto a table leg. A man was trying to swim to shore. Save me! cried one guest. I don't want to die! cried another. All struggled to keep their heads above the waves. The little mermaid searched desperately for the prince. Finally she saw him. He was trying to keep afloat, but he was tired. He began to slip below the surface of the water. He's going to visit the Sea Kingdom, said the little mermaid happily. But then she remembered that humans could not live beneath the sea. Unlike the sea folk, they could not breathe in the water. My prince will die! Oh, I must save him! she cried. The little mermaid dived through the waves and swam closer to the destroyed ship. She made her way through the burning wood falling from the ship. At last, she reached the prince just as he dropped beneath the raging sea. He looked like a leaf falling from a tree. The little mermaid grabbed him and pulled his head above the water. Hang on, dear prince. I've got you, she whispered in his ear. Then she let the waves take them away from the fire. The Little Mermaid Chapter 6 Daybreak By daybreak, the storm had stopped. The little mermaid swam to a beach, pulling the prince through the water. Then she stretched the prince out on the white sand. You're safe now, she told him. But he was not awake and could not hear her. She looked around. She was in a little cove with a small garden just beyond the beach. The garden had white benches surrounded by fragrant lemon and orange trees. Just behind the garden, she saw a large brick building. It has such a tall tower and such big wooden doors, cried the little mermaid. She held the prince's head and ran her fingers through his wet hair. Please wake up, my prince, said the little mermaid but his eyes remained closed. As you sleep, the sun will warm you, she lovingly told the prince. The little mermaid stared at his handsome face and then kissed his eyelids. 
He looks even more handsome than the statue in my garden, she thought. But my prince is real. Suddenly, the little mermaid heard a sound she'd never heard before. The tower was making a loud clang. The little mermaid looked up. Could that sound be church bells? Out of the large doors came a group of young girls. They were dressed in simple white dresses, and their hair was pulled back with white ribbons. Who are they, and what are they doing here? wondered the curious mermaid. The girls gathered around the benches, laughing and talking. The humans must not see me, whispered the little mermaid, suddenly afraid. Please stay safe, my prince. The mermaid left the beach and swam out to a rock. She covered herself with sea foam so no one would see her. Then she watched the beach. Look, shouted one girl to her friends. Although she was dressed like the others, she was more beautiful. She had big green eyes and long dark lashes. She ran to the beach and stared at the young man, who still had not moved. Come here, I found someone. The girl touched his face to make sure he was real. And at that moment, he woke up and smiled at her. Oh, maiden, what have you found? called one giggling girl. Then they all ran down to the beach and gathered around the prince. When the prince saw all the pretty young girls around him, he smiled an even bigger smile. But his eyes lingered on the girl who had found him, the one they had called Maiden. Thank you for saving me, he said. He should be thanking me, thought the little mermaid. I saved his life, and he doesn't even know it. Come inside to get warm, said Maiden. She led him toward the church. The others followed and then disappeared through the big doors. They're taking my prince away from me, the little mermaid said from behind her rock. If she could have cried, her tears would have fallen one by one into the sea. But mermaids are unable to cry, so no tears mingled with the crashing waves. I must go home to the sea kingdom said the little mermaid. But I'll come back for you, my prince. And she dived underwater. The Little Mermaid Chapter 7 Watching from Afar At first, the little mermaid decided to keep her love for the prince a secret. I will tell no one, she thought. Maybe I will forget about him if I don't speak of him. But she could think of nothing else. Finally, she told her eldest sister, I have fallen in love with someone from the upper world. Oh no, cried her sister. Who? He is a prince, said the little mermaid. But I don't know where his kingdom is or where he lives. Her sister told other sea folk what the little mermaid had said. Soon, one mermaid heard the tale and visited the lovesick princess. I know where he lives, she told her. His palace is on a hill just beyond the sea cliffs. Please take me there, begged the little mermaid. We have no legs to walk to his door, the other mermaid said. But we can swim to the cliffs. From the high rocks, we can see the little balcony where the prince sometimes stands. With her guide, the little mermaid swam to the cliffs and climbed onto the nearby rocks. From there, she saw a palace built of golden stones. A steep stairway led from the ocean to the palace entrance. And sure enough, on one side of the palace was a balcony. Oh, may 
maybe I will see him, cried the little mermaid, peering from behind a rock. She forgot all about her guide, who soon swam away. From that day on, the little mermaid visited the cliffs every evening. She sat on a rock and waited for her handsome prince. Once in a while, she caught sight of him, standing alone in the bright moonlight. Oh, prince, I long to talk to you, she said. But I can't reach you, so I'll sing to you instead. The little mermaid thought the prince would notice her if he heard her voice. In the sea kingdom, everyone said she had the sweetest voice of all the mermaids. My home is in the sea. Your home is in a place I cannot be. But your handsome face is in my heart, and my whole heart is in your hands. Come to me, my prince, come to me. But he was on land, and she was in the waves. Under the stars, the ocean breeze carried her voice away, too far away to be heard. So she watched him from afar. Some nights, the little mermaid would swim to the harbor, hoping to see him on the dock. But most of the time, she saw only fishermen with their nets, talking and laughing. What a smart and kind young prince, a fisherman said. He will make a great ruler someday. The little mermaid thought about her time with the prince as he lay on the shore. And to think, it was I who saved his life. She shivered with pride and love. The little mermaid remembered how she had kissed his eyelids. But the prince knew nothing of what had happened. I hope he'll learn the truth someday, she thought wistfully. The Little Mermaid Chapter 8 Dreaming of the Upper World With each visit to the Upper World, the Little Mermaid grew more unhappy. The Prince's world is so much bigger than mine, said the mermaid to herself. Humans can walk on land and sail the seas. Their lives are so exciting, and my life is so boring. The Little Mermaid thought about how she'd like to live in the upper world rather than the sea kingdom. Day after day, she sat in her garden alone. Her sisters became worried and went to their grandmother. Grandmother, said the eldest sister, please talk to the Little Mermaid. Find out why she's so gloomy. So the wise mermaid went to her grandchild and took the little mermaid in her arms. Sweet one, tell me what is bothering you. Grandmother, said the little mermaid, what happens to humans if they don't drown? Do they live forever? I told you, the wise mermaid answered. They die much sooner than we do, but their souls live forever. I want a soul too, and I want to live in the upper world. Your place is here, said the wise mermaid. Believe me, there is no better spot in the world than the Sea Kingdom. We are all very happy here. It is our home. But I want a soul like my prince, so we can both live forever together, the little mermaid said stubbornly. You don't need a soul, replied the wise mermaid annoyed. As a mermaid, you will live for a very long time. And when you die, you will become lovely sea foam. This way, you will remain part of the sea and a part of all of us. The little mermaid pleaded, 
Please, Grandmother, tell me how I can get a soul. The wise mermaid saw that she could not change her granddaughter's mind. Well, I've heard that a human and a member of the sea folk must marry, she said. Your prince would have to fall in love with you. Then, if he married you, you would become truly human and have a soul. So all I have to do is marry the prince? asked the little mermaid hopefully. I really do not know, replied the wise mermaid. What I have told you is only an old tale. I know of no mermaid who has ever received a soul or even wanted one. We live very happily without souls. But the little mermaid did not hear her grandmother's words. She was already too busy thinking and making plans. Grandmother, what must I do to live in the upper world? She asked. Forget about such things, said the wise mermaid. You would need legs and feet to live there. She patted her granddaughter on the head. Your beautiful tail makes it impossible for you to live on land. The little mermaid looked unhappily at her body and sighed. I hate my tail. The wise mermaid shook her head and said, You are lovely. Now go and play. Stop thinking about the upper world. The little mermaid swam away. But she didn't play. She thought, There must be some way to fulfill my dream. Someone must have the knowledge I need. Maybe I'll ask the sea witch for help. The Little Mermaid Chapter 9 The Journey to Gooba The sea witch lived at the edge of a dark place called Gooba. Its swirling waters were known to swallow up all kinds of creatures. Most sea folk were afraid to swim near it. They'd heard scary stories about curious mermaids who swam too close to Gooba and never returned home. Grandmother told me about the home of the sea witch when I was small. The Little Mermaid thought as she swam along. But it can't be that awful. Stop, Princess! A small fish suddenly cried out. Do not go to that terrible place! Don't worry, little fish, said the Little Mermaid. Then she thought to herself, The Sea Witch will grant my wish. I just know she will. The lovesick mermaid swam on and entered the gloomy realm of the sea witch. This place is as ugly as the sea kingdom is beautiful, she said to herself. Instead of gleaming white sand, the sea floor here was dark and slimy. Mud seeped from every hole and every crack. Where are the sea flowers? wondered the little mermaid. Where is the seaweed? Get out of Gooba, princess, hissed a snake from the mouth of a cave. Who's that? asked the frightened mermaid. The snake vanished into the darkness of the cave. All of a sudden, the little mermaid saw twirling cones of water twisting this way and that. The cones were swallowing up everything within reach. Anything that became caught in the churning water was sucked down into the mud. I am not afraid, she said to herself. My strong tail can take me around the danger easily. And she swam around each cone of whirling water in her path. Next, she came to a muddy forest of thin trees with bony branches. 
Each long branch had twigs that moved like fingers, grabbing anything nearby. The tree's sticky fingers held fish bones and pieces of wood from sunken ships. The skeletons of drowned sailors hung from the tree branches. Oh dear, thought the little mermaid. The trees never let go of their victims. Terrified, she stopped. I don't think I can do this, she cried. Her little heart thumped with fear and she almost turned back. But then she remembered her prince. For the sake of my love, she thought, I must go on. Before she entered the forest, the mermaid braided her flowing hair close to her head. Then she darted through the water like a nimble fish. The slimy branches stretched out their fingers to seize her, but she was too fast. They could not catch her. Finally, she reached a clearing in the sea forest. Fat worms stood guard and long snakes slithered about. The little mermaid saw a shack built of bones. The sea witch was sitting in front, picking her teeth with a seashell. With her tangled hair and beady eyes, she looked horrifying. At her feet sat a dozen pet frogs croaking at her. Welcome, little mermaid. I was expecting you, said the sea witch. And I know why you are here. You want to be a human. What a very foolish idea. Then the sea witch began to laugh. <laughs> The Little Mermaid Chapter 10 The Sea Witch The Sea Witch watched the mermaid closely. I will prepare a magic brew for you, she said, that will change your tail into legs and feet. How wonderful, cried the little mermaid. With legs, I can walk on land and be near my prince. Then surely he will fall in love with me. I must warn you, continued the sea witch. You will feel a lot of pain whenever you stand. To others, your walk will look graceful, like a dancer's. But every step will sting like a sharp blade cutting into your feet. The sea witch paused to pet one of her frogs. Then she asked her, Are you willing to suffer for what you desire? Yes, of course, replied the little mermaid excitedly. I would do anything to live in the upper world and get a soul. Remember, said the witch, Once you become human, you can never be a mermaid again. You will no longer live in your father's palace or play with your sisters. You can no longer ask your grandmother for advice. You can never come back to the Sea Kingdom again. I understand, said the little mermaid softly. The sea witch bent down and looked right into the mermaid's eyes. One more thing, my dear, she added. If the prince doesn't marry you, you will not get your soul. And the morning after he marries another, you will die and become sea foam. I will take that risk, said the mermaid, turning pale. I just know I can make the prince fall in love with me. Well, my dear, to seal our deal, you must give me something of value, said the witch. You have the sweetest voice of all the mermaids. Everyone says it is very special. I will give you the brew if you give me your voice. But I'll need my voice to tell the prince, said the mermaid. So have you lost your courage now, 
asked the sea witch, laughing. No, the little mermaid answered. She thought of the times she sang for her family. Remembering those happy moments, the little mermaid felt very sad. Slowly, she whispered, I will give you my voice. Then follow me. The sea witch took the little mermaid into her hut. Once inside, the witch placed a large pot over a steaming hole in the floor. She chopped up some snakes and jellyfish. She threw the pieces into the pot with some other slimy things. Then the sea witch chanted, The little mermaid asks to love a prince who only lives above. Now that her heart has made its choice, she'll have her legs, I'll have her voice. The liquid began to bubble. Smoky, ghostly faces rose from the pot. The magic brew was ready, and the witch poured it into a small bottle. Here is what you came for, said the sea witch. She handed the bottle to the little mermaid. The mermaid tried to say something, but no sound came out. Her beautiful voice was gone. Before sunrise, swim to shore, the sea witch commanded. When you are on dry land, drink the brew I gave you. Your tail will split in half and become a pair of legs and feet. Now go. The little mermaid nodded silently. The Little Mermaid Chapter 11 Inside the Prince's Palace The Little Mermaid wanted to see her family before she left. But when she reached her father's palace, everyone was asleep. She felt a great sadness. I'm leaving my home forever, she thought. And I can't even say goodbye. Then, just before dawn, she swam to the cliffs near the prince's palace. The little mermaid could see the balcony after she crawled up on the rocks. Once on shore, she swallowed the bitter brew. Suddenly, she felt a horrible pain, like a sword striking her tiny body. As she fainted, the little mermaid saw her tail begin to split in two. When she awoke, she found herself on a velvet couch. Her body was covered by a cape. She looked up and sewed the prince standing over her. I found you lying on the rocks, the prince said. Who are you and where do you come from? I am your true love, she wanted to say. I saved you from the sea. But of course, she could not speak. So she smiled at the prince, hoping he would understand. Come now, don't be frightened, the prince said warmly. But the little mermaid could only look at him with love. What is your name? He asked. The mermaid was silent. Finally, he said, I do not know why you will not speak, but you still need my aid. The prince helped the little mermaid stand up. As the sea witch had warned, every footstep felt as if she were walking on knives. Yet to the prince, she looked perfect. As they walked, she glided through the halls as lightly as a cloud. How graceful you are, the prince said as he led her into his rooms. He called his servants and ordered them to bring some clothes. Dress her as an honored guest of the royal palace, he commanded. Then he turned to her and asked softly, Would you like to accompany me to the royal performance today? The little mermaid nodded eagerly. After the servants dressed her in a blue silk dress, the prince led her to the palace hall to introduce her to his parents. How beautiful you are, 
exclaimed the queen. Where do you come from? But of course, the little mermaid could not answer. A tall woman entered the hall to perform for the prince and his parents. She sang very sweetly, and the prince clapped his hands in delight. The little mermaid sadly thought, I once sang even more sweetly. But as the little mermaid listened, she was surprised that she felt like dancing. She lifted her arms and her graceful feet glided across the floor. The little mermaid danced so magically that she charmed everyone, especially the prince. You are so special, he said. I will always keep you with me and call you my little companion. The little mermaid smiled up at him. Her eyes asked, Is that a promise? As time went on, the little mermaid became the prince's best friend. He took her with him wherever he went. They walked through the royal gardens and rode through the fields on horseback. They climbed mountains that almost reached the sky. And though she could not speak to him, she kept smiling, even as her feet stung with pain. The Little Mermaid Chapter 12 The Mermaid and the Prince At night, while the others slept, the Little Mermaid went up to the palace balcony. From there, she watched the waves and remembered her family beneath the sea. One night, she saw her sisters swimming in the waves far away. We miss our dear little sister, the oldest cried out. She, of course, could not reply. Instead, she thought, I miss you too, but I will marry my prince and live happily in the upper world. When she waved to her sisters, they recognized her. They swam closer up to the rocks. She held out her arms to show them she would hug them if she could. From then on, they came almost every night to sing to their sister. Once, she even saw the wise mermaid, who had not been up to the surface in many years. With her grandmother was her father, the sea king. They stretched out their hands to her, but they did not come as close as her sister's. Her grandmother seemed to be saying, We miss you, our dear child. But the little mermaid still wanted a soul and to be with the prince. I love seeing the world with you, little companion, the prince would say. You are very dear to me. Yet he never suggested making her his bride. He sees me as his friend, but I need to be his wife the Little Mermaid thought. And if he marries someone else, I will turn into foam on the waves. She shivered, thinking about such a fate. Sometimes, the Little Mermaid begged the prince with her eyes. Please love me best of all. Love me enough to marry me. When she looked at him that way, the prince would take her in his arms he'd kiss her lightly on her forehead in a brotherly way. But the little mermaid hoped that this would change. One day, the queen announced to her husband, It is time for the prince to marry. She wanted him to marry a princess from a neighboring kingdom. Let's arrange for them to meet, she told him. When the prince heard about this, he shook his head. I will never marry that princess, little companion, he said. I can only marry the one I truly love. Then he told the little mermaid his story. Once, I was on a ship that sank, and I almost drowned. Luckily, I was swept ashore. When I opened my eyes, I saw the girl who had saved my life. Her name is Maiden, and she brought me inside a nearby church. When I awoke the next day, she was gone. 
Though I saw her only once, that girl is the only person I would wed. Unless I find her, I will never marry. But it was I who saved you, thought the little mermaid. Please try to understand. But the prince could not understand, and only smiled at her. Oh, little companion, do not feel sad because of my story. Even though I will never find her, I am happy with you by my side. If only he knew the truth, she thought. Someday, the prince will realize that I love him more than anyone does. And in time, he will marry me. She would have to be patient for a little while longer. The Little Mermaid Chapter 13 The Voyage The grandest ship in the kingdom was chosen to take the prince to the neighboring kingdom. Decked out with ribbons and banners, it was ready for the voyage. The prince explained the trip to the Little Mermaid. It is my parents' wish that I meet the princess. But you and I know that I will never marry her. After all, she surely cannot be the girl who saved my life. Once again, the mermaid thought, how sad it is that he doesn't know I saved him. But if I had to choose a bride other than the maiden... The prince continued, It would be you. Then he kissed the mermaid in his brotherly way. The little mermaid smiled up at him. Maybe my dream of marrying the prince will come true after all, she thought. And for the moment, she was happy. You will come with me on this voyage, my little companion, he said. I just hope you won't be too frightened by the sea. The little mermaid smiled to herself. My prince doesn't know it, but I will feel right at home at sea. The little mermaid, along with the royal travelers, boarded the grand ship for their overnight journey. That night, while everyone slept, the little mermaid sat on deck gazing into the sea. She thought she saw her whole family floating just beneath the waves. They seemed to be calling to her to come home. I wish you well, she thought, but I must follow my heart. The next morning, the ship came into the harbor of the nearby kingdom. Its king and queen awaited the prince and his companions. Trumpets sounded from tall towers. The citizens of the land gathered by the docks to greet their guests. He's handsome, a girl shouted when she saw the prince step off the ship. What a wonderful match for our princess, said an old woman. It's a pity that she isn't here to welcome him. She'll be here tomorrow, replied the girl. A little wheat won't hurt him. The next day, the hours passed quickly as everyone celebrated in the streets. At last, a royal guard rode through the city announcing, Come to the palace hall! The princess has arrived! Everyone rushed to the hall. They all wanted to get a good look at her. Pushing through the crowd, the Little Mermaid was very curious, too. Finally, the princess appeared, tall, delicate, and dressed in white satin. She is truly beautiful, thought the Little Mermaid. And she looks a bit familiar. The princess's perfect skin was pale and clear. Her black hair was long and shiny. Under her long, dark lashes were the deepest green eyes that the Little Mermaid had ever seen. The Little Mermaid thought, I'm glad my prince is not interested in marrying her. But then the prince stepped up to greet the princess. When he saw her up close, he gasped. It is you! You are the one who saved my life! 
I remember waking up on the shore to see your face. He took the maiden's small hand and kissed it gallantly. I am very lucky to meet you again, my princess. And I would be most honored to marry you. The Little Mermaid Chapter 14 A Royal Wedding The prince's words cut deeply into the Little Mermaid's heart. All her hopes and dreams were shattered. Unable to speak, she could not tell the prince she had saved him from the storm. There was no way to tell him that she would die if he married the maiden. Without a voice, she couldn't utter a single word. What have I done? She thought. I should never have given my voice to the witch. The little mermaid could not even weep with sorrow since mermaids cannot cry. She could only look at the prince with her sad eyes. Blinded by his own happiness, the prince could not see that he had broken her heart. I never thought that I would find my maiden, he said happily. My dear little companion, you will share in my great joy. The following day, royal guards rode through the streets announcing the marriage. Then, the members of the royal families marched through town until they reached the center square. There, the prince and princess maiden joined hands and were wed. The young couple beamed with happiness, and the crowd cheered when they kissed. Only the little mermaid was heartsick as she held the bride's flowers during the ceremony. She thought about her old life in the Sea Kingdom and her grandmother's loving touch. I have given up my home and family forever, she thought. I have lost my lovely voice. And now I have lost my prince. I will die the moment the sun rises over the sea. That evening, the celebration continued on the grand ship. The prince, his new bride, and all their guests went aboard for a huge party. It was a calm, clear night, just like the night the Little Mermaid had first seen the prince. Brightly colored lanterns lit up the deck. Fireworks and cannon booms filled the air. Sailors and guests danced together to the lively music. The prince walked over to the little mermaid, bowed, and asked, My little companion, will you do me the honor of dancing for my guests? I wish I could dance with you, my prince, she wanted to say. Instead, the little mermaid spun onto the floor alone. As always, her tender feet hurt terribly. But this time, she did not notice the pain because her heart was broken. She knew this would be her last night on Earth and she would never see her prince again. The little mermaid would not get a soul, but instead become foam upon the waves. She danced as if she were under a spell, without thought, without dreams, without hope. The guests cheered at her every step and turn. Her feet seemed enchanted. Finally, the music stopped, and so did the Little Mermaid. She looked for the prince, but he had left. The happy couple has gone to bed, said one of the guests, as if in answer to her thoughts. Let us wish them well. On the deck, a tent of golden silk had been set up. Inside the tent, the royal pair sat on a bed. As the guests cheered, the prince kissed his bride and ran his fingers through her hair. The Little Mermaid Chapter 15 A Last Chance
After the party, everyone on board the ship finally went to sleep. But not the Little Mermaid. She knew that she would turn into sea foam at the first rays of dawn light. So she stayed on deck and looked out at the sea and the stars. My prince, my soul, and my future, they're all gone now, she thought. Minutes before the sun appeared, the little mermaid noticed some movement in the water near the ship. Suddenly, she saw five figures rising from the waves, waving to her. The little mermaid didn't recognize her sisters right away. Their long and lovely hair was gone. Together, they swam close to where she stood. Their heads bobbed above the water as they spoke. We're here to save you, cried the eldest sister. When we found out about the prince's wedding, we went straight to the sea witch for help. The second sister explained. She gave us a magic dagger that will save your life. In exchange, she demanded our hair. The third sister told the little mermaid what the witch had instructed them to do. Before the sun rises, you must plunge the sharp blade into the prince's heart. Once he is dead, you will become a mermaid again. The little mermaid trembled. But I don't want to hurt my prince, she thought. When the little mermaid hesitated, the fourth sister added, Please, sister, you must kill him to save yourself. Then you can come home with us. The fifth sister spoke for them all. We all miss you. Our grandmother and father are waiting for you. You belong in the Sea Kingdom. But I wanted my life to be different, the Little Mermaid thought sadly. The eldest sister yelled impatiently. Hurry! You must be quick! It's almost daybreak! Kill the prince now! She threw the dagger up into the air, and the Little Mermaid caught the knife easily. Please, hurry, sister, cried the five mermaids as they dived back beneath the waves. The little mermaid looked at the knife. She was uncertain about what to do. This gift had cost her sisters their beautiful hair. They had given her a last chance to save herself. The little mermaid crept up to the royal tent and parted the curtains. She stepped lightly inside and saw her prince with his arms around his new bride. They were both fast asleep. The little mermaid felt both anger and tenderness. Through the thin cloth of the tent, she saw that the morning sun was about to rise. Time was running out. Her chance was almost gone. She looked at the dagger and then at the handsome face of the sleeping prince. It was either her life or his. She lowered the knife close to his heart, but then stopped. How can I kill him? She thought. I love my prince. He must live, even if I must die. So the little mermaid ran out of the tent and flung the knife into the waves. Then she threw herself over the side of the ship and into the sea. She thought she could feel her body dissolving into thousands of bubbles of sea foam. Soon, the little mermaid would be no more. The Little Mermaid Chapter 16 In the World of Air Spirits The Little Mermaid felt the warmth of the morning sun on her face. To her surprise, she was not dead and had not turned into sea foam. Instead, she was floating above the water. It is dawn and I am still alive? She wondered. Above her head were two strange beings in long white robes. They looked as if they were waiting to greet her. 
They smiled as they floated in the air like clouds. She tried to touch them, but her hand went right through them. The little mermaid soon discovered that she was dressed in a robe, too. Like them, she was also part of the air and floating like a cloud. Without thinking, she called out to them. Who are you? To her surprise, she heard her own voice. And it was just as beautiful as it had been before she gave it to the sea witch. We are the spirits of the air, one of them replied. We travel through the world doing good deeds. Why am I here with you? The little mermaid asked. Your loyalty to the prince and your sacrifice has raised you up to the world of air spirits. The other said, You are now one of us. The mermaid was curious. I need to know more. Do you live for three hundred years like the sea folk? Do you have a soul like the humans? Here in our world, we also live for three hundred years. But we can earn our souls. When we do, we live forever. I've always wanted a soul, said the mermaid. What must I do to deserve one? If you do many good deeds throughout your three hundred years, you will get a soul answered one of the air spirits. Exactly what is a good deed? asked the little mermaid, now very interested. A good deed is when you do something nice for humans. The spirits of the air watch over humans. We bring them food when they are hungry and clothes when they are cold. Sometimes we whisper good thoughts into their ears when they are sad. We try to help in any way we can. Pleased, the little mermaid looked down to the earth. She liked the idea of watching over the humans, whom she had learned to love. I finally have a chance to earn a soul, she said laughing. <laughs> the little mermaid's joy was so great that for the first time in her life, she began to cry. Her tears of happiness fell one by one into the sea below her. Then the little mermaid saw the grand ship. She could see that everyone on board was now awake. Where are the you? prince and his bride were looking for her and calling out. After a while, they just gazed sadly out to sea. What has happened to my little companion? wondered the prince. She was so faithful to me. The Little Mermaid blew him a kiss that turned into a white feather. Floating softly down, it brushed the prince's cheek. Then she blew another kiss to his bride. She wished them both well, her first good deed.